after 11 weeks of action. It all comes down to tonight to decide who is going to be World GT Champion. And we're here at the virtual Spa Francorchamps for rounds 22 to 24 of this magnificent season. Hello, everybody. Paul Smith and Peter Mackay here once again on commentary. And Peter, it's a season finale. We always get thrills and spills in this one, don't we? Always. It's the last day of school for the World GT Championship Season 14. What a season it's been. And three races is between uh, a new champion, uh, James Boomey. He's had a fantastic season. He leads the championship by 71 points. It's not out of stretch for Ross McFarlane yet. But James Boomey, I'm sure there's a bit of, ne sure there's a bit of nerves jangling away. But three races to go and between himself and that championship. Absolutely. We, we started the season all the way back in July. I can't believe that we've uh, got to the end of the season already. It's been fantastic. Sebring was where we started. We had that North American run to start the season. Then the second quarter, we were in Europe. Silverstone, Circuit de la Sarthe and Circuit Barcelona. We then headed back stateside for Daytona before heading across the Pacific to Fuji. And then back to Europe for the Red Bull Ring, Monza, Imola last week, and spa Frank Shaw this week. And well, the championships, well, there's still a lot to be decided. The top four in Pro are still within a chance of winning that Pro Championship. James Bumay for Altitude Esports has a 71-point lead over Ross McFarlane right now for his Pure Sims Esports team. His teammate, Alex Davidson, is behind him, just one point clear of Jack Sedgwick for next racing. So third place as well is uh, really going to be heated battle in Pro. Mark Fletcher, Ethan Critchley, Life Sebastian, Axel Sliptrovich, Jesse Stevens, and Alex Alpha Fertile are you top 10 in Pro-Am it is just three drivers who can potentially win the championship Dennis Grabowski though has a healthy 150 point lead over Adam Watson in his altitude esports white car Andy Archer 234 points behind in his Fat Atom racing car is mathematically still within a shout but it will be a tall order for him to get that championship win. Daniel Sedgley ahead of Michael Gray, Jack Osborne, Tim Perry, Paul Webster, Chris Gooch, and Ben Gregory round out the top 10 in Pro-Am. The AM championship though, this is the closest championship between the top two. Just 46 points separate the Olympus Esports Titan driver and Sophia Ridpath with Carol Pakalka for that full tilt V Sim Sports team right behind her there adam hedgecock ahead of paul quist uh, paul yet yeah, paul quist with uh, william guthrie jesse Pay wilkins lars van ryan josh boot paddy faulkner and dan blackwell the teams well the pro teams championship that's still on the line here 130 points separate pure sims esports and altitude esports right now altitude esports white are ahead of free muk with apex from simutech and team redline rounding out the six teams there and then in Pro-Am, this is still not decided either. Olympus Esports Titan have just 128 points ahead of Fat Atom Racing. Full Tilt V Motorsports are ahead of Altitude Esports Blue. Full Tilt Sim Sports ahead of the V Autosport team uh, of their team mates. And then AI Race Summaries, DCW Racing 7th, Olympus Esports Atlas in 8th, 3 and Blue. Performance Link Esports rounding out the top 10. So qualifying is coming to a close here, Peter. And, um, well, so far at the moment, and he's not going to improve on this lap, Ross McFarlane provisionally on pole position. That's all he can do is just go out there, put it on the front of the grid and uh, go for the wins. So that's all he's got to do to try and put the pressure on James Boomey. Mathematically, it's quite difficult for Ross McFarlane to win the championship but it's not impossible a big win and if something went wrong for Boomy in this race all of a sudden it's game on it's the only strategy you can have full attack go for it and don't go to bed tonight uh, wondering if you you tried hard enough absolutely it's, it's only one mode and that's full attack here uh, today Jack Sedgwick I said he's still mathematically in with a shot 100 points behind just to explain to everyone at the start, before the start of this first race, there are 251 points available. So if, if you're within 251 points of the championship leader, you can still win the championship. 
after this first race it goes down to 166 points and then after the second race it goes down to 83 remaining for that final race so those are the magic scores that you want to be keeping an eye on in terms of what people need to be within to get those championships and we are we are told peter that the, uh, the series admins are going to be keeping the championship points up to date for us through the night which really helps us we're not having to get the abacus out oh we appreciate that enormously because if we were left to do the mathematics on our own it would all fall <laughs> apart so yes yeah, very much appreciate that of the hard-working admin team who have a very busy grid to uh, keep in check and uh, occasionally have uh, a few stewarding decisions to get on top of so there's a lot on their plate and they've delivered another great season they certainly have um as have the drivers as well it's been uh, fantastic to watch we've had some incredible races i mean the moment for me um was the end of that monza race uh, it was absolutely incredible finish josh thompson getting the win by seven thousandths of a second it's hard to argue for that as the moment of the year, isn't it? It's just been, uh, yeah, there's lots to pick from, but uh, that definitely does it for, for me as well. I mean, uh, the story of the year for me has just been the, the sheer rise to stardom from James Boomy and how he's brought himself up onto that top level. That's been remarkable. And also in the AM class, which is our most tightly contested championship numerically right now, Sophia Ridpath couldn't buy any luck last season this year it's been much, much better where our pace has made the difference. Well, without further ado, let us take you through your starting grid here for round 22 of the World GT Championship Season 14. It's Ross McFarlane who is the man who gets two bonus points in his championship. So that closes up the standings in pro. Alongside him, Jack Sedgwick on the front row with James Bume, pro championship leader, starting alongside Josh Thompson, who's looking for four wins in a row. Alex Davidson and Ethan Critchley round out its front three rows of the grid. Run number four, your top pro-am, Matthew Loveridge is absolutely loving that Mercedes recently. It's been going well. And look at that in am. Carol Pakalka, that's two points to the good for Carol Pakalka in the AM Championship. That's on row number four with Tim Perry, Jack Osborne, Adam Watson and Dennis Grabowski sharing row number six. The seventh row of the grid will be Daniel Sedgley and AM Championship leader Sophia Ridpath. Arthur Fertile ahead, alongside him is Andy Archer on row number eight, row nine, Paul Webster and Michael Gray. Tenth row of the grid then is going to be Dan Blackwell and Adam Hedgecock with Ben Gregory and Lars Van Ryn sharing row number 11. Row 12, Paul Clist and Mark Fletcher. And the final few cars, Joe Newman and Chris Gooch on the next row of the grid with Nathan Healy starting at the very back. So it's a relatively short pace lap here. They start just before Blanchimont for the uh, the pacing here, Peter. We are on the Grand Prix layout, so that means that they will take the start on the Grand Prix straight into La Source as your first corner. What the challenge is there for those drivers? Getting through safely. Uh, it's very, very tight coming through that right-hander and you can easily get tripped up in somebody else's accident getting on the power on cold tyres you can spin for those for the for the back in the pack they've got to be super careful and ready for something to uh, something to go wrong well ross mcfarlane is doing all that he can to win this pro championship he's got pole position that's two points in the bag for him he makes the jump at the front we go green flag racing here for round 22 of the world gt championship but fallen great launch ethan creepless making a move to the inside of the sauce Bume, your pro championship leader is caught up in an instant there there's one of the uh, fat atom cars is spun around that's jack osborne but as we head down the hill now towards our rouge and radion for the first time james Bume is down to 10th place in the opening of this race through this fast sweeping section we've got a spinner is that going to be red path it is red path that's your own championship leader she's been wiped out my goodness what a dramatic start to this race incredible scenes peter 
where to begin with all of that start with Bume my goodness me not often have we seen him make mistakes on the run to the first corner but it appeared he just outbraked himself there lucky not to get turned around um, wasn't, didn't quite catch who it was he went up the inside of but tangled with them slightly and was very very lucky not to lose any more position than he did but with uh, Ross McFarlane out front well this is uh, just what he needs to do get out there win the race and try and put himself in a position to keep Bume under pressure well, what helps James Bume is he has got Adam Watson and Tim Perry in front of him, which is two altitude esports cars. So uh, I'm sure that they'll be moving out of the way. Josh Thompson, meanwhile, is getting the shoulders out on Alex Davidson coming out of Poor. And uh, Davidson's had a heck of a start, but it was Ethan Critchley with the move down into La Source that sort of kick started it all, all the shenanigans. And I, uh, and I do get the wonder, I wonder if it was just Ridpath over the top of Radion with cold tyres that just caught her out there, but um, that's usually what happens at the top there, and uh, Arthur Firthall was also caught up in that one. It seemed, it did seem like it, just uh, on, on her own, yeah, cold tyres, I agree, uh, Paul, we'll get a closer look at it in a moment of uh, Sophia Ridpath, but, oh, and with Carol Pakalka up there in the top ten as well. One of the altitude cars goes for a dive on him there in that pink Mercedes for Pakalka, and he's just managed to resist that challenge. But Pakalka put together a great qualifying, eighth overall, top top of the AM class, and now up to seventh. Brilliant stuff for Pakalka, and exactly what he needs to do to, to close down that 46 point deficit. Adam Watson was just showing his nose to. Uh... Uh, no, it was Tim Perry showing his nose to Adam Watson, so change of position for those two uh, in the early going. So as things stand right now, it's Ross McFarlane who leads ahead of Jack Sedgwick. They've got a little bit of a gap over Ethan Critchley in third place, who has admitted that he's not liking the feel of the McLaren around this circuit. Then you've got Alex Davidson, Josh Thompson, and Matt Loveridge is fighting with Thompson. Two Mercedes there together. And remember that Loveridge is his top pro-am after a tremendous qualifying. Whoa. He's up one place as well, and we're going to car off. That's Tim Perry. Perry's oh. off. Perry just gets nerfed by Dennis Kraboski there. That was really unlucky there for Perry. Just Kraboski just too aggressive for me there in that black Porsche. Well, <laughs> he doesn't need to do that, though. That's the thing. He doesn't need to get involved. In Kalpakalka's getting very defensive here. I know Pakalka's on for a good shout of points, a good haul of points here, and wants to be able to get as much of an advantage over Ridpath as possible. But I don't know if I'd be defending that hard over James Bume. No, because all you're doing is bringing other people into the mix who can rough you up as well. You're better just, yeah, not not just running your running your line. It's very hard to tell from that angle if Redpath lost it on her own or if she got hit from the rear. Yeah, that, that we couldn't see. Yeah, we couldn't. Yeah, we couldn't see from that one as to uh, what Redpath did then. So yeah, unfortunate for Sophia. Now, if she does get back out on track, which she is, she can be one lap down and still score points. That's going to be important for her. She can't just sort of sit there and think, "Whoa, is me?" As there goes Bume down the inside of Pakalka. Uh, as now Pakalka's got uh, Dennis Grabowski with him uh, and out of the final chicane. But Ridpath just needs to dust herself down, just say, right, forget that, get points. Oh, Grabowski with a light lunge down into La Source gets the job done. And now Pakalka's got Michael Gray behind. Gray, I don't think, will uh, get involved in that one. Ah, now, Ridpath had to check up here and it just contact with the rear of that car in front and settled her car you're on the edge there aren't you through a rouge radion yeah and 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 the thing is that might look like you'd say oh why wouldn't you slow down there well the problem is you're going up a very very, very steep climb so you don't necessarily get as much of a view of what's going on ahead of you so yeah it just checked up ahead of her and she couldn't slow down in time to not run into the back of the car in front uh really such a shame there for uh, for Ridpath but right now she is showing us still on the lead lap so she's obviously managed to get her fast repair 
uh, and stay on the lead lap. Has she? Has she done her pit stop yet? Yeah, she's done a pit stop. Yeah, so so to basically just get it to the end of the race, see what comes with comes to you. And we saw a full reverse grid last week. You never know, we might get another one this week. Oh, that would be uh, really fun if we got another reverse grid. Uh, Ma uh, Alex Davidson has managed to get past Ethan Critchley, who is struggling in his McLaren here today. And Josh Thompson now is all over the rear of him. Thompson, though, I do believe, got a slow down penalty a couple of laps ago. Uh, so uh, he is now trying to recover. Don't forget, Thompson's trying to get four brace wins in a row here. But it's looking very difficult with it only being a 20 minute race here. He's got, what, three drivers that he'd have to overtake, plus the gaps that there's built up at the front. So yeah, it's going to be uh, going to be difficult for Thompson. I think he's more pushing Critchley along here right now. Is a big switch for Critchley. Massive moment there for Critchley. Just shows you Blanchimol. When a car is set up well, you can just go f absolutely flat to the boards through there in a GT3 car. When it's not set up, it's oh you're lifting off and then the rear's coming round and you feel oh do we go in with a balance throttle and it's it's just horrid and it eventually goes wrong you see a lot of drivers getting it wrong there but and it just seemed like Critchley's car was just oh, oh he's hit the pit wall oh well some very notable people have hit that pit wall uh, it's worth pointing out but yeah that's uh what is it we always say Peter that's suboptimal uh is that line and uh Critchley oh, I think it's more damaged ego rather than anything else with that one does hang on to fifth place with Adam Watson Matt Loveridge behind. Bume is up two places from where he dropped down to, so he's into eighth place right now. Critchley's going defensive on uh, on Watson, who's going around the... Oh, that's well. I think that was almost inevitable, trying to defend that hard. Watson trying to go around the outside, which he can do up there at... Uh, put a little calm, but, uh, yeah, not working out for Ethan Critchley there saying you live by the sword you die by the sword um and also said one other sorcerer said don't get in a punch up with adam watson <laughs> well that's, that's one way of putting it Peter. yeah um he's a hard charger <laughs> he's a hard charger that's what it is so here's a look from critchler's car this is into the source, so I think he just checks into the back there. Just touches the back of Thompson's car, hits the wall, and that just unsettles him to start with. And then, oh, well, we saw what happened up at uh, up at Lacombe. Yeah, that's um, and yeah, you wonder if maybe that might get got a little bit of damage to the rear of Thompson's car as well. You need all the all the aero you can get really to ride with. Uh, the new Ferrari 296 GT3 of Jack Sedgwick right behind McFarlane. You're going to have a look for the race lead. <gasps> oh, and of course, Sedgwick is even more in of a, a position as McFarlane where only a race win will do. So he will be willing to throw everything at this for a win. Yeah, don't forget, coming into this week, Jack Sedgwick was 100 points behind your championship leader of James Bume. Um and also, you know, he's got a shout of third place in the championship at a minimum. He wants, I think that would be his first aim, would be third place, wouldn't it? I don't necessarily think he'd be thinking of championship with the gap as it is, but you never say never, do you? Never, no, not when there's so many points on offer for a, for a win. Um, and yeah, and, you, and it's, when anything can happen to you know, a rival, well, Ethan Critchley right now, he's in the pits, he was up there fighting in the top five and now he's out of it. So it's, uh, it can all go wrong very, very quickly. Boomy, after that it, after that issue on the first corner, he's not made incredibly rapid progress up the field. He's only up to eighth and he's had a couple of guys have problems ahead of him too. Yeah, as uh, Grabowski then made the move on Loveridge. Yes, look at Adam Watson trying to follow him through there. My goodness, there's barely an inch given between Loveridge and Watson there. Oh, big slide from Matt Loveridge. Here comes Watson and here comes Bume. And Bume's almost getting boxed in here. Going down to Puwar. Oh, a little bit of a, a, a rub there. Loveridge is getting freight train down here right now. 
and that means more places lost for Matt. That's positions gained for Grabowski, Watson, and crucially in the Pro Championship, Bume. I suppose one thing that Watson's doing is he's clearing the path quite nicely for Bume to follow behind him. Um, so they're, yeah, they are making good uh, good moves forward. And Watson, you got to. You've got to take your hat off to him in this way because he's one to make sure he chases Grabowski for that Pro-Am title as hard as he can. Yes, it's almost mathematically impossible, but it is still possible and he's going to fight to the very last, very last lap to try and make that possible and try and keep Grabowski under pressure. Yeah, you, you, you don't, as, as you said, Peter, you don't leave anything on the table. Uh, you have to just put it all on the line and, and, and try your best because you never know what's going to happen in these races, especially these three 20 minute sprint races here in the World GT Championship. Eight and a half minutes remaining in this opening race of the night. Ross McFarlane is still your race leader of Jack Sedgwick. Alex Davidson is about two seconds, 2.2 seconds back from Jack Sedgwick. So he's got a little bit of a gap between the front two and third place. Josh Thompson now has been able to slowly reel in um, Davidson a little bit. But I tell you what, Peter, the, the front two are keeping a, a different pace to uh, to the rest of them because I'm looking at my your favourite thing as, as we're going side by side for Bume up ahead of Watson. Uh, my, your favourite thing, the five lap average, they're about two tenths quicker than Alex Davidson, uh, the front two. Per lap. Five lap average. That's what wins motor races. Oh, it's spin. Oh! oh it's one of the was that Ryan. Michael Gray in the out? No, it was in the so Ferrari. So it's the Ferrari, but it's uh, Lars van Rijn, because I didn't notice that he did have a mechanical meatball warning flag. He got the car back to the pit lane uh, and he did get. Uh, through Nathan Healy back. involved there in the yeah. Porsche. Yeah. So it wasn't Michael Gray. Apologies, Michael Gray fans. He's still in 10th position, looking very good. One of yeah. his best drives of the season, actually, for Michael Gray. It's been a tough year at the wheel of that Audi. That, that Audi, I think, is, is definitely showing that it's, it's not the favoured car right now. It's... Uh, Although we, we said that about the McLaren at the start of the season, how that wasn't the favoured car, and yet Ethan Critchley is putting some tremendous performances through the season now look at this run look at this run that cedric got on mcfarlane in towards the bus stop chicane and it's going to be a change of leadership right now don't expect mcfarlane to come back immediately he'll want to sit behind cedric right now and just use that slipstream of that ferrari but jack cedric right now he's uh, taken a win just one solitary win this season he'll be looking for more here tonight Yes, he will, and McFarlane's now starting to get the pressure on, trying to get the power down a bit earlier out of La Source there, but uh, couldn't quite get that get that done. He's right on the tail, though, of... Oh, through, <laughs> through Rouge and Radion there is Ross McFarlane. So he's right on the back, back diffuser there, and just going to try and set up a run here up the Camel Strait towards Le Com and he's always oh, flashing at the lights. Now, what does that mean? Is oh, Cedric crowds him over and covers his line off. Brilliant racing. And I behind. What, next, Thompson's yeah. going to be on them in no time if they keep this up. Well, uh, that's it, Peter, isn't it? If you, if you start fighting with the people around you, you're going to be uh, asking, for a, uh, asking for those others to catch up to you. Uh, here's John Newman. He's got Ben Gregory behind him. And Gregory... Well, I think Ben was a bit busy flashing his headlights at John Newman and uh, got that corner at uh, Mel Medy all wrong. Yeah, it's not been the best season for Ben Gregory, has it? It's uh, He's the most experienced driver in the uh, World GT Championship. Has competed in every single one of the 14 seasons. Um, but yeah, this has definitely not been one of his one of his best whatsoever. Yeah, he, he did actually say that he was uh, looking forward to just seeing the back of uh, GT3 cars for a little while. Uh, Ross McFarlane's dropping back here, you know. Jack Sedgwick, through that middle sector, that Ferrari, with its um, 
Well, it's, it's a huge diffuser on that Ferrari, isn't it, Peter? It's, it's cavernous, is that? And it really looks like it's good through that, that middle sector. Yeah, it, it, it's such a step. Um, it's really brought the GT3 game on a whole new level in terms of speeds, downforce, cost. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, it's quite a machine, but there is people... There are teams queuing up for them uh, at the moment and brought Ferrari its first win in the Nürburgring 24 hours and that just shows you how how, di how versatile a machine it is and how it can go to any endurance race in the world and win. Certainly. We've got about two laps remaining in this race. So McFarlane's not out the slipstream yet. Well, that BMW, it cuts a, a big figure at, um, just hear him just slightly lifting off uh, through there, but now getting that slipstream, and you can see him gaining, 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 but he's not going to catch up enough by the end of the straight, I don't think. Might see Cedric move to the right? No. He, he was confident that McFarlane would be behind him all the way up the Kemmel straight. If you've never been to Spa, Frankishaw, you don't realise just how steep that run-up to, uh, to uh, Lacombe really is. Thompson's not really catching up uh, to these two right now. So uh, I think Thompson's going to be a tall order. He needs something to happen between these two for him to have any chance of four in a row here. Cedric looking really strong, really at every part of the circuit. We saw there, there was, you know, only so much that McFarlane could do right in the slipstream of the Ferrari. So it's clearly got good top end. Um, and through these higher downforce sections through Puon and through the Fania chicane where yeah, downforce and change of direction very very important and McFarlane can't really mount any kind of attack so it's clearly a very good package and Cedric has got that Ferrari set up very well Daniel Cedric looking to the inside of Paul Webster into Lafania or into Piff Path or Whatever the spa Frank Short owners decide to call that corner. Yeah, Puon, it's called Double Gauche officially now, which literally is translated as Double Left. I mean, Puon is a more iconic name, I think. But there you go. Usually because of the uh, physiological reaction that you get when you get it wrong through that corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, um, quite. Um, as they come across the line, one lap to go here. If Ross McFarlane's going to get a move done, he needs to be close through Uruz Radion to try and get that slipstream up the Camel Straight and to get to the lead of this race. Both of these drivers need and want to win, but only one of them could get it here, Peter. That's right, and this is really, really key for, I mean, Ross McFarlane is much closer in the fight for the championship than Cedric is so <clears throat> he really needs this win as they come up the Camel straight and uh, well the Ferrari of Cedric tucked to the very inside line and can only crowd over so much then here comes McFarlane's going to try and hook it around the outside they're side by side through Lecom and they're still going to be side by side as they head down towards Bruxelles where Cedric will have the inside line but good respect for racing yeah onto the break Cedric crucially on that inside line and he just gets the lead back, but they're squeezing each other through Brussels, through the left-hander here, onto this downhill section. And all the while, Josh Thompson is closing up to these two. So if they carry on with this side-by-side -side action, then Thompson could really be in with a shout here of just rocking up and taking the lead. But Cedric now, crucially through this middle sector, that's where he seems to be, just that little bit stronger in that Ferrari than Ross McFarlane in that BMW. But the main chance now is into the bus stop chicane at the end of the lap. That clock in the top left-hand screen, at left-hand corner of your screen, that's about to expire. We're on the last lap of the race, and McFarlane, I think, is just that little bit too far back to be able to make a move here on the slipstream, but never say never, he's going to push it all the way to the limit to the end here through Blanchimore for the final time in this opening race of the evening Sedgwick oh he's showing the door there is Sedgwick for McFarlane to look down the inside there's almost contact between the two of them Sedgwick looks to get the launch and here comes Thompson 
Thompson! Thompson! Is he going to get a win here at the end? At the death across the line? No! It's going to be Cedric who takes the win here from McFarlane and Thompson. But my goodness, that was incredibly close between the three of them. Uh, Den Skrabowski takes Pro-Am win here in this opening race of the day. And Carol Pakalka, what a result for Carol. Top Am in ninth place. But Peter, I said that Josh Thompson was uh, gaining on them and he nearly snuck a win. You know, as they were coming through Puon, I was thinking, I think Thompson could win this somehow. I just had that feeling and he didn't, but... I could got as near as you could possibly ask for without it. Three cars covered by seven hundredths of a second. Wow, what a what a finish! I mean, because it was just sort of sizing up all the way through the race. Cedric and McFarlane sort of trading blows a little bit, and then it just went bananas on that last lap. Very well defended there by uh, Sedgwick. Um, he did leave plenty of space on the on the inside, but he was thinking the long game. Got the win, and how important will that be for the championship? I will mention, by the way, Sophia Ridpath, that she's still finishing the lap. She's just getting to uh, Stavolo right now. So uh, we've, we've got a little while before she gets to the end before we can give you the full uh, provisional race results. But what we do have is the first spin of the wheel tonight. Remember, we spin this wheel twice tonight to decide who is going to be on pole position for these races. So around and around it goes. And where will it finish? Well, we'll all see in just a second. And it's 14. 14 is the reverse grid pole. So we'll be able to give you that uh, result in just a few moments time as Ridpath does come across the line. So let's take you through your provisional race results then for round 22 of the World GT Championship. And it's only just won by Jack Sedgwick by less than half a tenth of a second over Ross McFarlane with Josh Thompson a further three tenths of a second back behind him. Alex Davidson not able to hang with those drivers, finishes fourth though. Good results still for him and ahead of Dennis Grabowski who's your top pro-am. And he's um, he's got one hand on the trophy there for pro-am. The privateer uh, James Fumer, your pro championship leader, after dropping down to 10th for the start of the race, got himself up to sixth in the end uh, of that one. Matt Loveridge, second place in Pro Am, a uh, great result for him in seventh ahead of Adam Watson, who finished third in uh, Pro Am. Your top Am driver, Carol Pakalka, ninth place overall in this race. Tremendous drive from Carol, even though they did lose one position. Michael Gray finishes off the top 10. Mark Fletcher, 11th, ahead of Paul Webster, Daniel Sedgley and Joe Newman. Dan Blackwell, a good result in AM to finish second place in AM, 15th overall. Ahead of Tim Perry, Jack Osborne and Ben Gregory. Adam Hedgecock uh, does get onto the AM podium in the end in 19th, ahead of Paul Quist. In 21st, Nathan Healy, ahead of Andy Archer, who was one of those drivers caught out in opening race incidents. Ethan Critchley with a battered and bruised car finishes 23rd ahead of Lars Van Rijn. Sophia Ridpath 25th, almost two minutes behind your uh, race winner. And then two drivers who did not finish that race. It's Arthur Fertel and Chris Gooch. So that is how things were there, Peter. Um, Joe Newman is the lucky driver, new to the series partway through this championship finds himself on pole position well it's quite a baptism of fire isn't it at spa on the last day of the season to get that opportunity but i'm sure you'll grab that with both hands what it does mean in our am class championship run is that P carol pakalka will get another very good grid position uh, he'll start i think on the fifth row um somewhere like that so or I mean, maybe even actually further up than that so He's going to start start much, much further up than Sophia Ridpath will be. So there's an opportunity for Pakalka to score a huge chunk of points again in the championship chase. And the AM is going to go right down to the wire. I think we could see a big swing here and see Pakalka um, leading possibly after this race. With Ridpath finishing 25th, 
25th scores you uh, 38 points and it was ninth place which scores you 60 so not quite a full uh, switch of positions but that's really close that am um, championship up here in that opening race a dramatic race and it all started at turn number one with uh, james bume getting caught up with ethan critchler with the dive to the inside and that's the championship pressure. That's the pressure that James Boomey is under. He's never done it before. Ross McFarlane has done it four times before. And that does show no matter which driver you throw in that situation. It's always nervy. It's always twitchy trying to get it over the line. And yeah, that's the mistakes that we haven't been seeing at all from James Boomey all year. And uh, yeah, I think it's maybe just a little bit of jitters getting in there. But to be very fair, he'd steadied the ship well and he made sure he got, like, he didn't make any further mistakes, got the car home in a good position and minimised the damage. Points have been updated after that first race of the evening. James Bume now just has a 55 point lead over Ross McFarlane. He's got a 30 point lead over Jack Sedgwick. Uh, who's a further 10 points ahead of Alex Davidson now. So Sedgwick moves up into third place in the pro standings. Crucially for Brume, though, it's still 55 points. It's a nice, healthy cushion is that for him. Pro-Am, Dennis Grabowski, I said he's got one hand on the trophy. He's 160 points clear. I remember now, after that first race, only 166 points are potentially available to the drivers so dennis just needs to finish this race and he's got the pro-am championship the am championship though it's down to 19 points here peter things are going to be feeling tense and sophia starting all the way back in 25th don't forget it's going to be uh, a big challenge for sophia this one it is and she's got to be super careful because she can't afford another mistake uh, that's the thing is she can't afford another mistake and she cannot afford to get caught up in someone else's mistake so she's got to be super vigilant on those opening laps and yes yeah, she's only got 20 minutes on the clock but she's faster than the, you know a good number of the drivers around her on that grid so she's just got to pick her way through methodically might be that she sheds another few points to Pakalka this time but the trick is get that get a clean race under the belt she should still have a, a, a little bit of an advantage um, on points and then it's just a winner takes all going into race number three. We've been talking about this over the last three, few race meetings, haven't we, Paul, that we knew that this um, title was going to go down to the wire and it seems like it absolutely is going to do that. It certainly does look like that indeed. Um, the team's championships, by the way, Pure Sims Esports lead by 159 points over Altitude Esports and Olympus Esports Titan. They have exactly the same lead over Fat Atom Racing, 159 points. So uh, those two those two championships aren't over either yet. So there's prizes available for, for multiple drivers in this series. So uh, definitely gonna be intriguing to see how that goes um, for this one. Um, yeah, certainly really interesting. And we've not really talked about prizes all season, Peter. It's worth pointing out uh, for each of the class, if you finish in first, second or third, uh, first place from Free MUK, you get a SIM t-shirt and case-like gloves. It's a new pair of gloves for you if you win the championship, be it Pro, pro Am or Am. Second and second gets a t-shirt, third place gets gloves. From Simutech, the pro driver who wins the championship gets a Simutech SDU3 dash. In fact, I don't know why they've listed it for I thought it was different for all three championships. Whoever wins each championship gets a Simutech SDU3 dash um, here. And top three of each class, plus the first plus first place teams all get an acrylic trophy as well. Very important, very important stuff that up on uh, up on offer for these drivers, and of course the pride of it as well to uh, to come out on top of what is a very competitive field in every class. Um, so good luck to all those drivers who are uh, they are going right down to the wire, um, and yeah, particularly the AM Championship. Who knows who's going to come out on top there? Well, we will get to see how it all goes, but just stay with us because after these few messages, we're going to be getting ready for round 23 of the championship, the penultimate round 
of the season here on race spot tv stick around we'll be right back after this Chip finale's day and well it has certainly been dramatic in that opening race in terms of the championship we're getting ourselves set up for the second race of the evening paul smith and peter mckay and we have got some updated championship standings here that we can actually visually give you so uh, uh we'll say hello from here in the commentary booth um but we, we're just killing a little bit of time because there was uh, a little bit of a problem with the first session but we're getting that new session up now um incredibly close i mean that the pro championship still any one of four can win that championship uh, it was 55 points that separates james bume and uh, ross mcfarlane there peter but uh yeah, certainly it was uh, it was really close uh, in the opening one, and it would have been a heart and mouth moment for Bume in that opening race. Could have gone a lot worse, you know. If that had been a spin, he'd have been straight to the back of the pack, and the gap would be a lot tighter than it is. But managed to get through that uh, initial uh, scare. There did uh, did Bume fifty five points, a good advantage, but with a possible one hundred and sixty six on the table. By far, he cannot relax. That's the thing, especially in uh, uh, the context of a reverse grid race. Certainly just needs to keep on pushing, does James. But Ross McFarlane and Jack Sedgwick and Alex Davidson, for that matter, will continue fighting to the very end of the season. Pro-Am, well, as I said, one hand on the trophy for Denis Grabowski. 160 points separate the two of those so uh, Grabowski is in with a great shout of that just needs to finish this race to guarantee himself a pro-am championships and then in am this is the one that we we've been focusing on more peter but look at that just 19 points separating the top two right now yeah very very tight isn't it between ridpath and pikalka and yeah, the, all the momentum is with Carol Pakalka. He's had such a strong second half of the season. And 
particularly this last few rounds, he's been there all the time and scoring very good overall results as well, which of course is where you score the big points. Absolutely. So uh, that is how things stand after the first race of the evening. But of course, two more races to come for you here today. Uh, so that does mean plenty of opportunities for drivers to be able to uh, win themselves a championship or in some cases lose themselves a championship. It only takes one little mistake around here, especially on the opening lap as we saw in the first race, Peter, for Sophia Ridpath. How how nervous would you be if you're in, say, the position that Sophia Ridpath is in, or do you think, right, just gun it, go for it? Personally, I would be quite nervous, um, but uh, that's why I'm sitting in this chair and, uh, <laughs> rather than the chair that Sophia is sitting in. Um, it's just going to be all about patience and just picking the way through, picking the way through methodically, not going not trying to force moves that aren't there just because you need to get through doesn't mean that the move is on uh, you have to make sure you set the moves up correctly and make them decisively um we saw several examples in that first race of kind of half-baked moves causing incidents and Sophia cannot afford any of those under any circumstances as soon as she hits an incident whether that be of her own making or somebody else's making it kind of doesn't matter that's going to make her championship very very difficult uh, because Pikalka at the moment he's just on an express train and she's just got to try and try and slow that express train down in time before the championship finishes and also don't forget as well that if you get yourself involved in an incident there's a post event stewarding that goes on championship points are potentially uh, uh, to be able to lose championship points should I say could be an outcome of uh, any penalty decisions here so you've got to keep your nose clean as you point out there Peter you've really got to be uh, wary about it that's the thing is if you've been involved in several in a couple of incidents and you win the championship you think oh have I won the championship or am I going to get a poor race penalty which strips it away and it's that close within the AM Championship that, that something like that could swing it either way between Pakalka and uh, and Ridpath so yes you really want to try and avoid those incidents if you uh, if you if you can we did see on Thursday evening in the World Touring Car Series Ross McFarlane won that championship by a single point and it was literally a move across the line that got him the championship so it can show how just the smallest of things can can really uh give yourself a, a great up, give yourself a championship for that so uh it, it is all on the line still is what we're saying here we've got about three minutes remaining here in the practice session and looking at the track conditions as things stand right now peter i'm seeing nearly 39 degrees celsius track conditions right now it's a clear blue sky for the drivers but it's a 20 minute race you're not really going to be pushing those tires too much to be feeling the effect of uh, of heat build up will you i don't think so i think you will get less grip um than we had in race one um i don't think the lap times will be what they were in race one the, the track temperature has increased a bit to the point where it's getting towards excessive 39 degrees celsius i think you're getting over the optimum temperature there so the tire is just not going to be able to grip with the surface in the same way that it, it, it does at a, at a lower uh, track temperature uh, of course it can be worse we see it much we see it much worse than that i mean i've seen it at 40 at not kill so it definitely can get much worse uh, than, than that so yes it, i think that's something for the drivers to keep an eye out and this is why it's a good idea to get out there and warm up even if it is just for a couple of minutes just to get a bit of a feel of where, where the grip is and where it's not. It wasn't 40 degrees track temperature when I was at Knock Hill. <laughs> I'm just going to point that out. It was a lovely day, a, part, a lovely weekend. Well, apart from the last race, but it gave us some tremendous racing to that weather change. But um, but certainly uh, it, 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 it can happen, is what we're saying in the UK. But fortunately for the drivers, they're at Spa Francorchamps. Well, we, we did it. We, we had the BTR Day Rallycross uh, series at uh, Knock Hill two weekends ago, and the tr track temperature when we arrived was 1.1. Wow. <laughs> yes. So, uh, I've seen it, seen it at both ends of the spectrum um, for, uh, for Knock Hill. But yes, yeah, Spa Francorchamps, middle of a nice, sunny summer's afternoon. 
time for a time for a, maybe a, a Trappist beer and some uh, frites and mayonnaise, I think, for me. Uh, well, I can say that I have actually been to Croft Circuit when there's been snow on the track, so uh, it was even cold. It was cold that day, I can guarantee you. But the Marshall's Hut uh, was was a welcome sanctuary amongst the uh, wide open spaces of Croft that day. Yeah, yeah oh, was, the, was the ball for all on that day? Oh, the stove was getting a lot of use. There was a lot of uh, of cooked sandwiches <laughs> for that day. I can tell you. Um, yeah, that Marshall's hut. It got nice and warm in that. It was like a, you know, these garden sheds that you can get from DIY stores. It was like that for uh, for the Marshall's post. We were we were well uh, looked after at Croft. Other circuits are available. <laughs> Just keep going further north, and you'll get to the best. <laughs> It's not Eastwatch uh, and it's not killing Dog. <laughs> well, anyway, we are getting set for the uh, second race of the evening of three races, three 20 minute races here for you today. I have noticed we've lost one driver, which was Chris Gooch, who did not take the start of the first race of the evening. So let's take you through your starting grid here today for the second race of the evening and it is Joe Newman and Daniel Sedgley two prams at the front of the grid with Paul Webster and Mark Fletcher on row number two Michael Gray and Carol Pakalka there row number three that is huge for the AM championship contender Adam Watson Matt Loveridge then on row number four with James Bume the pro championship leader starting alongside him is Dennis Grabowski on row number five row six for Alex Davidson and Josh Thompson Seventh row of the grid for Ross McFallon and Jack Sedgwick with Dan Blackwell and Tim Perry on row number eight. The ninth row of the grid for Jack Osborne and Ben Gregory. Row 10 for Adam Hedgecock and Paul Clist with Nathan Healy and Andy Archer on row 11. Row 12, Ethan Critchley and Lars Van Rijn. And then the back row of the grid, just uh, two more drivers, Sophia Ridpath and Arthur Thurtle. So there we go. That is uh, the, that is the grid as things stand. It's a tall order for Sevilla Ridpath to start from the back of the grid to hopefully get any points out of this one to help her try and hang on to that AM Championship lead. But this is a good opportunity for Joe Newman. Sean promised in that Mercedes, and that Mercedes has been strong this last third of a season. It has. It's really come on form in these last uh, last few meetings, particularly in the hands of Josh Thompson, of course, who coming into this round had a run of three in a row. So, yes, it's a very, very solid package right now. So the driver's heading through the bus stop chicane. We are getting set for the start of round number 23 of the World GT Championship. John Newman's launched already. We're underway here in this penultimate round of the championship in towards La Source for the first time. And there's some moves being made. Three wide, Matt Loveridge and Dennis Grabowski getting a little bit of contact. And this Daniel Sedgley is off, off to the side of the track. And I believe that's Paul Webster that was involved in that one. It's one of the full tilt Ferraris. So that must be Webster. Healy's at the back of the field. Oh, big, wow. big crash. Davidson! Alex Davidson! Off into the wall! Incredible scenes here with Matt Loveridge caught up in all of that as well, Peter. Well, that's any very slim chance that Davidson had of fighting for the championship over now, and it's all over again. Oru's Radion, when it goes there, it goes wrong there, it goes wrong big time. Oh, okay, oh Pakalka! Pakalka's around! My goodness, this is the driver! fighting for the AM Championship. And there, going past right now, is Sophia Ridpath. It's now, it's it's gone in the favor of Ridpath all of a sudden. Oh, there's ball spinners, that's Clist. Paul Clist having an issue down at Brussels. Well, I know it's hotter track conditions, but I didn't expect it to be this slippy out there. Oh, it's all over the place, isn't it? Wow, we, oh, another driver off there to the right onto the tarmac section. 
That's uh, one of the full tilt out. Jeez, Michael Gray, Gray. yes. Yeah. Went a bit wide, but managed to hang on to it. Goodness me, it's all going on here as well. But all, well, we talked about the momentum that was with Carl Pakalka. Well, that swung hard back in the favour of Redpath. Paul Webster is trying to limp his Ferrari back to pit road to get his fast repair here. To get some sort of results out of this race. Ben Gregory, Alex Davidson, Michael Gray and Matt Loveridge have all got mechanical meatball warning flags. So that's possibly why we saw Gray struggling through Pouin. As we go through Blanchimont. Oh my goodness, Webster almost getting involved. And I've just seen Carl dropping down the order. Michael Gray in the background of the shot there. Gray is off. He already had a mechanical meatball warning flag. Oh, careful if you rejoin! <sighs> that was Carol Pakalka that you nearly wiped out there. Why do you need to do that? I'm sorry. You just, there is so much room there to turn around or wait to the other car. You don't need to do a stupid flick turn onto the racing line. That is ridiculous driving. Yeah, that's uh, crazy oh, stuff. And there's more accidents. Tim Perry. Paul Webster now. Oh, there's carnage. It's carnage everywhere. Oh, bang. There's more getting involved in this one. This second race has just been an absolute massacre out there. There's Ethan Critchley off to the side of the track there. I can tell you now, the list of meatball warning flags, mechanical meatball warning flags. Webster, Davidson, Osborne, Van Rijn, Perry, Gregory, Blackwell, Gray. Incredible amount of what on earth has happened here, Peter? Well, what has happened is championship leader James Boomey has got himself up into fourth after all of that. So he's had a great start to his race. He's ahead of his championship rival Ross McFarlane by three places. Uh, so yeah, great start for Boomey uh, in the AM class. Uh, Adam Hedgecock, he's got, he's up in the lead in the AM class after uh, after all that carry on. And it's just all kicking off here as well. Red Path, she's up into 13th on the back of the grid. This is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. And uh, all I will say is um, good luck to the, uh, the series stewards having a look at this one afterwards because that is. Yeah. Michael Gray just shred his license in half. That was, that was abysmal driving. Um, there was absolutely no need to do that. There was, it was not clear to do so, and you do a flick turn onto the racing line. Pakalka did an amazing job to avoid yeah. it, and you are fully, fully committed coming out of there. Blanchimont nearly flat in top gear, and you're just on it, and all of a sudden there's a car deciding to do a big 360 in front of you. No, that's not on, not at this, not at this level, no way. Uh, Adam Hedgecock has just allowed Alpha Fertile to go through. Uh, Sophia Ridpath right now, interestingly, is behind Nathan Healy. Now, Nathan Healy is a full-tilt driver in his Ferrari. Remember, Carol Pakalka is going for that AM Championship. And who does Carol Pakalka drive for? Full-tilt V Motorsport. So, uh, could we see a little bit of shenanigans going on? Well, no, because Sophia Ridpath has... Uh, made it past. Oh, in fact, no. Ridpath stopped. Ridpath stopped at the side of the track. I can tell you the yellow flags, and there's Ridpath. Oh, my goodness. Well, what on earth has got into these drivers here? This is ridiculous. And Pakalka's got ahead now. Here's Ridpath then, looking to make the move down the inside. Oh, he hold your line, Nathan. Poor Sophia, what on earth could she do there? She'd left more than a car's width on the outside. And... A Paul Clister off to the side of the track there. Yeah, I just... That's, yeah, I don't know. It did... Did the, the car on the outside there of Ridpath, did they lose it on, on the power on the kerb? Uh, Nathan Healy, I don't know. Yeah, it, it just seemed that they turned quite abruptly back on to the circuit, maybe trying to avoid a track limit break, I don't know, but uh, whatever happens, Redpath has given plenty of room there on the outside and yeah, didn't exactly get the same respect in return. 
let's just get a little bit of a reset then. Let's see where we stand right now because we're 13 and a half minutes remaining in this race. Mark Fletcher, it's worth pointing out, the Altitude Esports team boss, is currently leading this race over Joe Newman. Adam Watson's in third place right now. Watson and Fletcher have generally been around each other at times through the season. Josh Thompson's in fourth. In fact, there goes Watson with a move on Joe Newman and almost wipes out his team boss in all of that. And Thompson now right up behind. It's going to be a matter of time before Watson gets overtaken here by the hard-charging Josh Thompson, who, quite frankly, had a night to forget on Saturday in the Porsche Takoya Esports Super Cup Contender Series. He'll be wanting some good results here. Top three now, once again for him, in the second race. Yeah, uh, I think in a win here. It really, it said to us at the end of the meeting last uh, week that he really was en enjoying back racing here. He'd missed it being away from the World BT Championship and loving being here, winning some races and challenging for great results as well. And uh, yeah, he's looking strong in this race now up into third. Meanwhile, Boomy is going to have a look on his teammate, Adam Watson. Watson, is he going to give him the room? Yes, he is. So Boomy goes through and Grabowski tries to make it a two-for-one and Adam Watson said, eh, sorry, no two-for-ones here, pal. I said, you buy one, you don't get one free. Yeah, you do not get one free, no. <laughs> Grabowski now coming defensive on both Ross McFarlane and Jack Sedgwick. And Sedgwick actually is going to try and go down the inside of McFarlane. McFarlane says, no chance, mate. Oh, my God, there's Thompson almost hitting the wall there on corner exit. These two, though... They were at it in the first race of the evening. They're at it once again into Poo on the go. Side by side. Well, you don't normally go too wide through there, but these two, fantastic racing between these two. Yeah, really respectful as well. I mean, not, not running each other off the road or anything like that. Oh, just as I say that, they make a bit of contact as well. It's, oh, don't make me a liar, guys. As, uh, well, I tell you what, McFarlane's been stern in his defence and, oh, just takes the position back with vigour and puts Cedric a little bit further back but while they've been doing that look how they've lost the centre of Grabowski up ahead so ah, here we go here. This, this is, is the rib path the... incident uh, he's just he's just drifting towards rib path there yeah, off of the curb really bad awareness really bad well these two McFarlane and Sedgwick the problem with these two fighting now is that they're allowing allowing James Bume to pull away. There is Bume. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, producer Dane Baird, for that one then. Nicely done. Uh, showing us uh, Dane, uh, showing us James Bume then up into fourth place. He's gained five places. Josh Thompson's gained nine places in this race. Andy Archer, 13. Arthur Fertel, 16 places gained. Incredible. It's amazing what carnage can do for you, isn't it? Yeah, it's usually someone's got to profit from it. There's got to be someone left at the end. Um, it's like a, a pile. It's like a rug, if a rugby's come collapse, there's always someone on the top of it. Then you think you climb off, no problem. Oh, dear. Well, here comes Grabowski now, trying to make a move around the outside of Adam Watson. Remember, this is your battle for the Pro-Am. Oh, in terms of the championship, but Grabowski... Oh, it's just going to try and oh Watson just refuses to let it go he does not know when he's down does Watson and whoa Grabowski that was a big boy <laughs> pretty aggressive sweep across there to defend his position I, I mean there's aggressive and then there's that. <laughs> that was that was on the edge there that was literally pushing it to the limit so uh I think even yeah, Adam Grabowski. might have blushed at that one <laughs> Well, that's the thing. You've got two aggressive drivers right there, both Grabowski and Adam Watson. Watson with a big, big moment there on the exit of Poor. Rook Fallon's going to look, not going to make the move through. Meanwhile, Josh Thompson has got ahead of John Newman. So your pole sitter now down two spots here. They're doing a good job, though, past the halfway point of this race. Still holding on to third place for the Pro Am newcomer to the series as they come out of uh, curve at Paul Freya and head towards Blanchimont once again. It's incredible to watch. If you stand on the inside of that corner on the, uh, the public footpath, 
incredible to just watch the speed that those cars t- can take around that corner. Yeah, I mean, in a, in a modern GT3 car now, they've got so much downforce and they're carrying so much speed out of the quite a little bit more technical section out of uh, coming out of Stavolo. And you really are just building on speed and going through Blanchimont. Fantastic. Yeah, really good stuff here from uh, Joe Newman in the Mercedes. Right in behind there, uh, behind uh, Josh Thompson. Although he's got James Boomy behind him. Interesting to see what approach Boomy takes here. Does he try and force the issue or does he just sit there knowing that he's ahead of McFarlane and that will do just fine? We've seen Boomy be very clever all season long. Yeah, it's, it's been the case, hasn't it, in the um, reverse grid races that Boomy's not necessarily been the quickest through a field, has he? But he's been methodical about things. Oh, contact! Oh. Side to side contact! Bume's got to be careful there not to pick up any damage because you're going to be turning at that point. You've got the potential of damage in your, your steering there. Fortunately, mm. able to carry on. No, ma- no mechanical meatball warning flag for him. But that, that's the sort of thing that he can't afford, isn't it, Peter? He did seem to clip his wings a little bit, though. I don't know if things are all well at the wheel of that... Uh, Number 28 Porsche of James Boomy. That's, no, no, we're riding on board in a BMW. So, no, that's, uh, oh, so now McFarlane can smell blood. He's got Grabowski just up ahead of him, but the next car is Boomy. So, for McFarlane, I would think he's going to be pretty aggressive now to try and make a move on Grabowski if he can and try to really put Boomy under the cosh, make those, you know, those championship jitters really get, get going in that rear view uh, camera though on the dashboard and Jack Sedgwick just huge in that taking up all of the uh, the rear view camera there I, I tell you what that is from the times that I have actually driven GT3 and GT4 cars on the service um, that rear view camera is a godsend compared to uh, having uh, just a traditional mirror on the windscreen it, it helps so much well, I always remember one of the the real early advocates for Corvette racing, Pratt and Miller, with their uh, their background in the aerospace uh, industry. They uh, were one of the first cars to really really get it right with that uh, rear view camera, but also having the sensors of different cars arriving and color coded sensors of is it a prototype? Is it a GT car? Are they faster? Are they slower? I mean, giving the driver so much information and so much greater perception. Well, Josh Thompson is now just half a second behind your race leader in Mark Fletcher. There they are, just gone through Radion, up the Kemmel straight, and Thompson, that's interesting. But Fletcher feeling the need to take a very defensive line, and Thompson's just sat there running his own line, not worrying about following Fletcher here. Thompson has just got so much confidence right now in his speed compared to Fletcher, I do feel. Yeah, Thompson, this is, looks like more of a, a matter of uh, when rather than if uh, for uh, for the Mercedes team redline driver. Meanwhile, behind Joe Newman, there's a bit of a traffic jam with Boomy first in the queue behind him. And then Grabowski, of course, with the Pro-Am win at the moment is in the hands of Newman but with Grabowski getting menacingly closer in that black Porsche of course we saw a black Porsche win the overall championship last season with Leandro Andaruti uh, and Grabowski looking in position to win the Pro-Am championship again in a black Porsche actually it was good to see Leandro Andaruti jump into the uh, virtual paddock so he's watching along and uh Wishing the drivers well for their uh, championship finale. So always good to hear from a, uh, a, a from a, a, a championship former champion who's no longer in this championship. Um, and he certainly, was special. yeah, he was he really was, good. Uh, well, he, he, he was better on that attempt last season than he was two seasons before that. Oh, different driver, different mm. driver entirely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was really special last year. He had almost had that kind of Kevin Estra aggressive, confident swagger around his driving style that was just so compelling to watch and got the results just fantastic. Here go Grabowski having a big dive there and oh, he's just messed it up and McFarlane's gone, yes, please, thank you. Yeah, that is, that is what McFarlane was waiting for, the opportunity to get past Grabowski. So now it's your pro championship leaders 
first and second in the championship, absolutely neck and neck, side by side, through the source. We've got two laps to go here in this race, and McFarlane taking an extreme left line. Uh, you've got Bume taking an extreme right line into a Rouge Radion. We're on board with Sedgwick. Grabowski's just backed off and said, you know what? This isn't my fight here. And Sedgwick now following. Here comes McFarlane in that big menacing BMW. We know how fast that BMW is in a straight line. Bume is going to be beaten here into the braking zone. But that Porsche, so good under braking. Oh, Sedgwick had to just back out of that one. Bume had to back out of it as well. McFarlane, crucially for the championship, moves ahead. But it's not that many points. Bume taking a very early defensive line on Sedgwick now. From Bumi, he's under, a, he's in a world of pain now. With Cedric behind him, we saw how strong Cedric. Oh, Bumi's off! Bumi's off! He's off the road. Oh, that's huge. That's a, a big mistake. I don't think there was any contact. And um, Adam Watson, Adam Watson, backed out of that one and goes, no, 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 no. You need the points. You, you go ahead. You keep seventh place. But uh, yeah, that's a big, big moment, and that would have been a. A huge heart and mouth moment. Here we are. Oh, it's the curb. It was the I entry know. curb. I'd love to see that from Sedgwick's point of view. I really would because I don't know. I oh, I don't know. That was a pure Sims car going slow. Davidson. Davidson, yeah. yeah. So I'd like to see that from Sedgwick's point of view myself because they were close. I just seen think an odd one from Boomy. I just think that, that entry curb on the right hand side, it does unsettle the car. Here we go. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's nope. all the curb. Nope. Oh dear. What an error. I we have not what... seen errors at all this season, really. It's, it, James Boomy has delivered such a good season, and Championship Day, the pressure appears to be getting to him. Well, seventh place, that would give him, as uh, I'm furiously looking through the. <laughs> the rule book as we enter the final lap of the race. But Farland, it's not over for him yet. Bume in seventh, 64 points. Farland in fourth, 70 points. That's only a six point swing. When you think it was 55 points at the start of today, at the start of this race, sorry, should I say, that's, it's not a big enough gain for, for McFarlane or for Sedgwick here. Davidson's out of it. We, we know that after that lap one incident. But it's still, it's Thompson at the lead. We, we didn't really mention it, but Thompson did get the lead on that last lap over Mark Fletcher, and he's pulling away now. Thompson's looking to make it four from five victories here. Joe Newman still holding on to that third place, and McFarlane's not really closing up to him. It's a really good performance from Joe. I do wonder if Boomy's maybe a bit close on incident points because here at Spa, it's so easy to break track limits that you accumulate single incident points quite regularly. Mm. But there's also been quite a bit of contact out there. So, and if you have contact that's heavy enough, you get four incident points. So yeah. it could be that Bume is quite close to the incident point limit and is scared of getting either a drive through or at this point, a post-race penalty, which would kill his result. Well, don't forget, you get a buffer of five instant points, and then for every two instant points after that, you lose a championship point. So, um, yeah, that could be uh, a crucial factor in all of this. Josh Thompson, though, he's not worried about championships. He's just racing for fun and for uh, and for a victory for Team Redline. As I say, came into this week having won the previous three rounds of the championship, didn't win that opening race, got oh so close to a win in the opening race of the evening but the team red line driver just two more corners to go and he will call himself victor once again it's four wins from the last five races for josh thompson across the line for him john newman brilliant drive to finish third place in, in the race and top pro-am am now that's going to be close because Adam Hedgecock is leading Carol Pakalka, but it's not by much at all in this race. As we go to live pictures, here's Pakalka to the outside of Hedgecock. Hedgecock's trying his best, can't hold off, and Pakalka takes the M win here, 13th overall in this race. 
And that's going to close that championship gap up just that slight bit. But crucially, let's not forget, it's not individual points for, uh, for different classes. It is which position you finish in as to what points you take to your championship. Ridpath finished 15th, that's 48 points. 13th for Pakalka, that's four points gained for Pakalka before any instant point deductions. Oh, well, that was um, certainly something, Peter, wasn't it? Yeah, there's a lot to unpack there, isn't there? Wow. It, that's reverse grid races. It, it, it all looks so calm in that first the first race of the day but when you get the reverse grids it all just seems to get a lot more fraught but that was particularly extreme that race let's get you well i mean these are provisional results because there are still drivers finishing their last lap here who were caught up in incidents uh in that one in fact what we're going to do we're going to step away just make sure we get the full results but what we will do in the meantime is get you a spin of the reverse grid wheel because we can do that in the meantime uh, and let you see who is going to have the final reverse grid pole position of this season. And that wheel is coming down. And it's going to be 22. Wow, that's quite a big reverse grid here, considering we had a 26 car starting field. So that's nearly all of the field here in this race so uh, now that all the drivers have finished we can give you your unofficial race results from round 23 of the world gt championship it's season finale day here and it's josh thompson who takes victory for team redline 1.1 seconds ahead of the altitude esports driver and mark fletcher in second place third place for your pole sitter joe newman the privateer great result for him that's a pro-am win in the bag there so uh, he gets that ahead of championship contender ross mcfarlane and jack sedgwick fourth and fifth places for them respectively dennis grabowski he is going to be your pro-am champion here this season finishing sixth place crucially ahead of adam watson that's his championship sewn up here ahead of pro championship leader james bume who finished seventh place adam watson eighth finishes off the pro-am podium ahead of andy archer and ethan critchley 11th place for arthur fertile who made an incredible 15 places in that race ahead of daniel sedgley and then we saw the move right at the end of that race carol pakalka able to get the position from adam hedgecock that could prove crucial going into the final race of this evening carol pakalka 13th overall taking an am win ahead of adam hedgecock who finished second in am 14th and then third in am 15th was sophia ridpath the am championship leader it went a lot better for her than that she expected i would imagine in that race nathan healy finishing 16th ahead of matt loveridge paul Cliss, dan blackwell uh, uh, are now drivers who were involved in instance in that one ben gregory as well I think it's almost easier to say who didn't get involved in incidents. Tim Perry, Jack Osborne, as well as Alex Davidson, who finished one lap down. Paul Webster did finish the race two laps down, so doesn't score. Lars Van Ryan and Michael Gray do not finish. So, Peter, um, it, it's, it really is a, a, a toss-up now for the AM Championship as to who's going to win that one, because that is incredible close between Ripath and Pakalka. The Pro Championship's still at hold, but we have to say congratulations, though, to our Pro-Am champion, Denis Grabowski. We do. Yeah, he's been imperious in that class all season. We commented it on before the season, thinking he's going to take some beating, you know, former World Championship license holder, and comes in as a Pro-Am. And, yeah, we, we talked about the... Uh, the, the comparison to the FIA driver ranking fake silver, he's definitely the, the ultimate fake silver. And we say that with the greatest compliment. He's been the class of the field and yeah, very deserving champion. And yes, you have to say Adam Watson for running him to the final round is quite an achievement in itself as well. Yeah, certainly Adam has, has done a, a, a good job uh, to be able to carry on that fight and to to try and get to the uh, the end of the season but Denis Grabowski 
I've done it on his own. That's a that's another driver. You think uh, Leandro Andaluti last season in Pro won it on the on their own? Denis Skrovsky in Pro Am doing it on their own. Yeah, Porsche Porsche privateers. That's uh, something that's been a an ever <laughs> ever present in sports car racing since the early 1950s. Um, so there's yeah, there's a nice little bit of serendipity there. Um, privateer in a Porsche takes on the. Uh, takes on the world and, and wins. Yeah, certainly. So uh, these drivers, they do fight hard. And Denis Grabowski has been one of the most aggressive drivers of the season. Gets himself a Pro-Am Championship. We do have to say provisional. We always have to say provisional. It can be post-race. Uh, stewarding decisions could change things here uh, in this one. But there are still championships to be decided. It's the Pro Championship, the Am Championship, and we've still got the Teams Championships as well, Peter, um, to be decided as well going into this final round. This is exactly how we have finals day each and every season here in the World GT Championship, isn't it? It is. It is. It's always fun and exciting. And my eye is on that on that AM Championship because it's going to be very very tight. Particularly when you you, know, you mix in the reverse grid into that uh, into that scenario. Sphere so Ridpath did actually limit the damage oh, quite quite well. Um, and then you know the, the the momentum went back and forth and back and forth. But it's going to start the next race with Sophia Redpath a couple of positions ahead. She's got to make those early laps count, get out there and, and just get as get as much of a gap as she can in that situation over Kalka. It's, it's winner takes all now, really. It really is. And it's going to be fascinating to watch that fight uh, pan out here in the final race of the season. Well, we are just going to step aside for the final time this season to hear from the series sponsors, but stick around because the championship finale, the final round of the championship is coming up next. Well, we have been able to crown ourselves one of your champions. We've just got a few more to decide here. Welcome back to coverage of the World GT Championship here uh, on Race Spot TV. Paul Smith and Peter Mackay 
for all of the action here and after a um, uh, tumultuous and um, quite frankly almost x-rated second race of the evening peter two championships in the driver standings are still on the line to the end they are and i think if any the last uh, race gave us anything to think about it's that it can all go wrong very very quickly and it doesn't necessarily have to be your fault either so yes if you're in the, if you're james boomy right now or indeed sophia redpath and you've got that championship lead you're thinking oh god we're going into the casino here let's just hope <laughs> we, we come out the right uh, side if you're carol pakalka or ross mcfarland you just go 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 for the win that's all, all all you can do and just hope that it it might be enough or that something goes goes your way so i think McFar McFarland probably he knows that he's going to need something to go quite drastically wrong for James Boomy to win the championship so that will give him an air of relaxation Pakalka will probably feel that he's maybe got the edge on pace today it seems like he does have a little bit of an edge on on speed um, so he's just got to try and use that to the best of his advantage and, and just go for it um, but they're definitely in it they've got they can they can race a little bit a little bit looser whereas those with the advantage they've uh, well, they'll be nervous right now, but of course they're the ones with the points in their pocket, not out of their pocket. Um, before we go into the pro standings and, and, and that, I will just mention the pro teams championship. There's 132 points between Pure Sims Esports and Altitude Esports. It's going to be very difficult for Altitude Esports to do anything with that. And Fat Atom Racing, 161 points behind olympus esports champ uh, titan so i think we've pretty much got the team's championship settled there we'll get everything confirmed after this final race but let's have a look at pro championship standings to start with going into this final race james bume now 45 points clear of ross mcfarland it's just those two for the championship now because jack sedgwick being uh, well actually no jack sedgwick 74 points back still mathematically in with a shot of winning the championship but alex davidson is out of it and davidson's gonna struggle to even try and get third place out of this yeah it's uh it is gonna be a bit of a bit of a tricky one really isn't it and but it, second third fourth it's not i don't think drivers at that level are too concerned about where they finish there i think that it's the win or nothing for drivers of that level so really it's yeah mcfarlane who's going to be looking ahead uh, at boomy hoping that he can put a good result on the board and hope that something happens to boomy that's all he can hope at this moment as we mentioned pro-am has been decided dennis grabowski with 172 point lead so we then look to the pro the, the am championship 17 points separate Sophia Ridpath and Carol Pakalka. If I'm Sophia Ridpath right now, she's starting ahead, directly ahead of Carol Pakalka. I'm just following. I'm 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 the shadow of Pakalka. I'm just following them through throughout this race. It's a good strategy, I would say actually, if you've got the if you've got that gap in uh, in in the pocket, yeah, that's a good idea for uh, for uh, for Redpath to not not take take the risk. But I think with what we saw in that second race, it's all things being equal, great. But the 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 pack, the pack could be shuffled so aggressively in that first lap. It certainly could, and uh, well, Adam Hedgecock third place. He'll be happy to get himself an, an acrylic uh, trophy he'll also get himself some uh, gloves as well from 3m from the sponsors at 3m here um so one quick mention before we do head into that race we've got about a minute before we grid series sponsors once again simutech great to have them on board again and they've provided some great prizes for your champions 3m long time supporter of the championship mr hedge sim for racing photography is always excellent peter uh, you, you always sing uh, sing the praises of uh, at lord hedge uh before a broadcast but uh it's great to have such such dedicated sponsors for a series like this any kind of motorsport doesn't really happen without sponsors they come in different shapes and sizes um you know in a way an entrant is a sponsor because they have to pay for an entry they maybe need sponsors to support them for what they do and that applies in the virtual and the outdoor world 
Um, so we appreciate each and every one of them um, as racing fans and part of the the racing uh, ecosystem. So yes, without these companies who give their give their support, um, racing just doesn't doesn't happen. So we appreciate it enormously. And you, you look at companies like uh, you know you look at 3M for example. You look at the products; they're trusted by racing drivers in the sim world, uh, gloves and boots and things like that, but also for full fireproof wear in the outdoor world, most of the British touring car grid, a lot of drivers all over the world trust their uh, trust their products to keep them safe. Right, well, we will seat ourselves to the grid for the final time in this championship. Drivers will be heading themselves to the starters' grid. So it's Jack Osborne who got himself pole position for Fat Atom Racing. Could he get a good result here? Tim Perry, after that crash in race number two, he'll be hoping for better things here in this one. Ben Gregory and Dan Blockwell on row number two with Paul Clist and Matt Loveridge on row number three. Fourth row for Nathan Healy and AM Championship leader Sophia Ridpath with Adam Hedgecock and Carol Pakalka starting directly behind Ridpath on row number five. Daniel Sedgley now for Fertile on row number six. It's the seventh row for Ethan Critchley and Andy Archer, the two teammates looking to get a good run here. Adam Watson and James Bume, your pro championship leader starting on row number eight the ninth throw your pro-am champion dennis grabowski uh, held alongside him jack sedgwick ross mcfarland and joe newman then chair row number 10 with mark fletcher and josh thompson row 11 alex davidson and paul webster on row 12 and then the final two cars lars van rijn and michael gray so the drivers are out on their pace lap for the final time here, Peter. Track conditions just 20 degrees, so it's almost 20 degrees cooler for the drivers. We're going to be seeing some uh, hard charging here in this one. Yep, much, much cooler, much better conditions as the sun sets over Spa, the sun sets towards the end of the World GT Championship. Season 14, where, well, it's game on in the am class particularly but it's not done yet in the pro class let's go yeah pro and am yet to be decided here in the drivers championship but we're getting ready for the start of round 24 of the world gt championship and it's jack osborne who gets us underway in towards la source for the first time here we're going four wide that's never gonna work out and there's contact adam hedgecock is around Oh, dearie me, Carl was stuck in the middle of La Source. We're going downhill towards Eau Rouge Radion. Sort themselves out as they go through. Josh Thompson, I think, was involved in that because he's dropped all the way to the back of the field. Down towards or up towards Le Combe for the first time. And again, spreading out two, three wide. Matt Loveridge looking to make a move into Le Combe. That's on Dan Blackwell, who's uh, been having fun out there in the series. Great to see him join the series part way through. As they go through in towards Bruxelles for the first time. And uh, well, Ross McFarlane 16th, James Bumay 14th. And Bumay's doing exactly what he needs to do. Sedgwick already up to 10th after that instant at Turn 1. That's incredible. That is absolutely incredible from Sedgwick but getting word that uh, Ridpath has dropped all the way back down to 20th place as well and Pakalka much further up the road uh, Ridpath must have got caught up in that lap one turn one incident then um, as uh, we go up into the Fania there is Carol Pakalka Pakalka is going to be on edge right now 8th place so currently, 8th place, that gives you 62 points in the championship. 20th for Ridpath gives you 43. Oh, dear. That's going to be a swap of positions because uh, uh, it was 17 points, remember. Healy's off. Nathan Healy's off. Careful of the rejoin. That's the second time we've seen tonight people rejoining when there's a car coming round. We're going three wide into the bus stop chicane. Carol Pakalka's involved in all of this. Paul Clist is there as well. My goodness, this is all heart and mouth stuff if you're 
fighting for an AM championship in Carol Pakalka. Oh, and Pakalka, yeah, really doesn't need to be getting himself involved in that kind of uh, that kind of stuff. But oh, it's very very close then in the AM class. And um, yeah, I don't I don't expect uh, Sophia Redpath to stay in 20th for long. No, in fact, she's up into 18th position now, so she's fighting hard for that championship. She doesn't want to see it slip between her fingers right now. She's side by side with another of the full tilt cars, the Audi and Michael Gray. They're still side by side going up through Rouge. Did they pop out the other side? Just. Oh, do you see? Now, this is the problem that Broodpath has got here. That's two full tilt cars that she's fighting with. And, oh, as it's getting tense up there in the mid pack up towards the front of the field as well. You, you've got to pick and choose your battles, but when you Carol Pakalka, full tilt v mode spot, they've come with a Whoa. lot of people around us. Grabowski. Now he backs it out into the gravel trap. Oh, and he's just going to rejoin, I feel, behind Alex Davidson. So Grabowski's down to 25th. Doesn't matter for him. He's already won the Pro Am Championship. Oh, it's good. He's already got it in the bag. And actually, that was Sedgley who was getting in the mix there with some of the full tilt drivers. Ridpath was just up ahead and that was Grabowski who spun right in front of Ridpath so it's all going on there's another place for Ridpath the Kalka where is he now he is in ninth right now so Ridpath's got to keep trying to close that gap down oh this is tight Ridpath's actually got ahead of teammate Paul Clist so I think that was the easiest move that Sophia is going to have uh, this evening there is Carol Pakalka we're focusing on this AM championship battle because this is the closest one coming into this final round remember going into this final round it was 17 points was the difference Pakalka by virtue of the two AM wins has got two. Oh my goodness there's two cars the two cars right on the exit of Blanchimor Gregory and Loveridge were hearing and incredibly everybody's avoided them. I'm not quite sure how those are two completely wrecked cars. That uh, Mercedes has seen better days and Loveridge and oh, oh was that synchronized spinning? Uh, possibly. Oh my god. Cedric just threads it straight through the middle. Oh my word. This is just oh my goodness! Uh, and if you're if you're one of those championship contenders, like a James Bumay, like a Severe Path, like a Carol Pakalka, every time you see something like that come up and happen in front of you, you take a huge and take a breath, don't you? It's just turning it into a bit of a lottery, isn't it? You you just hope you've picked the right line and you go through the smoke and hope through. Hopefully, you come out the other side. Wow. Okay. Reset. Bumi, you're, he is in ninth right now, a couple of positions ahead of Ross McFarlane, so he's doing exactly what he needs to do to close off this championship. This is what happened with, uh, with Loveridge and Gregory. Loveridge does get into the back of Gregory. Yeah. It's, it's only, and it's only the, oh my goodness, oh my how Lord. close was that? Um, gee whiz, if that had been head on, that would have just been an airplane crash with that right then. That is incredible uh, to see. Um, and thankfully, able to carry on this race, that would have been a safety car if, because that would have just been cars everywhere um, if that had been the case. Now, Carol Pakalka in the AM Championship is in seventh place at 64 points. Sophia Ridpath is 14. 50 points that's only 14 points difference you've then got to worry about the incident points as well which we don't know at this point well that's true that is fair and i think it could come down to that but it, what's in ridpath's favor is is that uh Pikalka has a bit of an all-star cast behind him he's got critchley uh he's oh, oh critchley into Pikalka. Pikalka's round oh my goodness this is the damn championship potentially ebbing away. Pakalka and Ridpath absolutely together. Rid Pakalka will have the biggest of slow down penalties right now. James Bume is going to slow down penalty as well. Had to take avoid an action down to 12, down to 13, 14 now for Bume. So the approach championship leader 
Oh my goodness, this is crazy. This is, I mean, this is fantastic for us to watch, Peter, but uh, for these drivers out there, they will be, uh, oh my goodness, the heart rate will be up in the, hun uh, in the 150, 160 range. I'm not the sure. dropping it's, down more. Oh, it's, it's, it's more, it's just messy. Yeah. Um, Critchley just drilling into the back of Pakalka. What could Paro Pakalka do there? Oh, it's Critchley. Oh, oh no, that's uh, Pakalka. That's Bume. That's Bume. That's a, to consider that you're, you've got a championship on the line there. The last thing you want is to be turned around. Yeah, that was risky. That was very, very risky from Bume and getting. But he just needs to get whoever's on his radio, get on the radio and say, you're already in a position to win the championship. And, no more, no more mistakes. Just st stick on it and get to the finish, and you'll you'll have the championship. But but Critchley, what an error that was! Just plows into the back of someone fighting for a championship, which he is not. That's not. Yeah. That's not on. Yeah, you, going into these final couple of rounds of a championship, you always got to be a little bit respectful of the drivers who are fighting in a championship. And afraid, yeah, that was just uh, uh, that wasn't the best at all i do i don't think um let's have a look then so this is critchley uh it's come charging in i mean was there any con well there was definitely contact secondary and that was bume who uh, made the secondary contact had to cut across the shin chicane bume does have some significant damage to the front of the car as well that'll be affecting the top speed Yeah, not not so good, not so good at all. There, um, and poor old poor old Pikalka, he was in a great spot, um, looking to really be putting the pressure on Ridpath for the championship. Now, well, what does he? It's that's kind of that's kind of it really for him, uh, unless uh, Ridpath hits some huge problems, but it doesn't look like that right now. So. Let's have a look. Here's on board then. So here's Critchley into the braking zone and just bang. Straight into the side, straight into the back quarter of Pakalka. He's never going to get that car stopped uh, the way it was coming into that He's never chicane. making the corner. No. No, not at all. Let's have a look then. Jack Osborne, don't forget, started in pole position. Is still in the lead of this race by half a second over Tim Perry. It's two pro arms at the front, and with all this fighting and all this chaos that's happened in this race, you can tell it's last day of school. If, uh, somebody isn't happy that they didn't get the chance to play Hungry Hungry Hippos, but uh, well, it's Osborne and Perry at the front, and Jack Sedgwick, fair credit to him, 15 places gained. He's wanted to get a win out of this last race. You bet he is, you bet. He's dri driven really, really well so far uh, today. And what can McFarlane, you know, what can McFarlane grab from uh, where he is? He's in sixth right now. If Bume is running wounded, Bume could potentially lose more places. And are we getting to the point where we need to be looking at the maths again? Well, it's 45 points is the championship gap. Ross McFarlane right now is in sixth. He's going to get 66 points if he finishes in that place. James Bume is in 13th. That will be 52 points. That's only a 14-point swing there. So it's not enough for McFarlane. But um, you know, if Bume gets involved in, in anything and is found at fault for a, for a contact at all, then you know, that could have connotations in this one. Bume is definitely wounded. He is really struggling here. Um, just doesn't have the doesn't have the straight line speed at all to be able to fight. And the kid's coming up, going to be out on his case pretty soon. Davidson, Alex and Davidson Thompson. in that pure Pierce and Thompson. Yeah. So Bume's life might be getting a little bit more difficult. Webster does leave the door open for Bume, but I think he might regret that because I just don't think Bume's got the gallop on the straight, unlike the prancing horse Ferrari that looks in perfect condition. And I think Webster right now, he's getting that, he's probably having to come out the, out the gas there because Bume's not expecting Bume to not have the pace on the straight. You can't have the run too early up through a Rouge Radion. You've got to time that run. <laughs> he's bump drafted it. He's bump drafting it up the straight, which uh, isn't always clever. 
in GT3 cars. You can actually uh, end up getting hooked under, dive under. Uh, Ross McFarlane, though, he's leaving nothing to chance. He's moving forward through this one. Is a fight in championship contender, a previous four-time champion in this championship as well. So Ross has got the experience, and yeah, he's he's just leaving it all on the. T he's not leaving anything on the table here, Peter. He's asking for seconds and thirds. Yeah, quite right. Well, that's what we're like in Scotland. We're just a greedy bunch, really. Yeah. <laughs> More cream for McPhail. Um, so, yeah, we've got uh, McFarland chasing down, but I think we'll be able to catch Dan Blackwell. Do you know, Cedric is maybe going to be a harder, uh, harder thing to do with seven minutes to go, but McFarland could get himself up into fourth here. Then it's just a matter of how, you know, can Boomy limp that Porsche home to, to get the championship? It's it's been a twitchy performance it's not been a typical james boomay season 14 performance he's had 11 rounds where he's been really really solid and this round has been twitchy but you can understand that given the pressure yeah i mean i i've no, i've only ever been involved in championship fights for an am championship but i've never led it going into a final round i've always been the chaser and it's a different mentality when you're chasing as you've been pointing out throughout this this evening peter it's all about you just making the moves and trying to gain those points. But when you're leading a championship going into a final round, it is just so difficult because you're, you're on edge and you're trying to avoid any incidents. And, uh, well, he, he's got caught up in a couple of incidents in this, this week, which he doesn't normally get involved in. Yeah, that, and w which could have been a lot worse as well. I, I mean, it, yeah. he did manage. He's escaped a few scrapes tonight, that's for sure. Which maybe means it's 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 just his year. It's just his season where everything's just come together, even when it looks like it's not. So, yeah, Boomy. I mean, that that contact that kicked off in front of him that could have given him a meatball flag easily. He would have missed the pit lane. He would have had to come all the way around, then go to the pits, get a repair and all of a sudden McFarland's up there in fourth and you're thinking oh wait a minute let's get the calculators back out again so yeah it, it could have so easily gone much much worse for uh, for Boomy in some of these situations Ridpath getting the move done on Andy Archer then up into the top 10 for Sophia uh, you do have to say that um, she's been under a lot of pressure from Carol Pakalka don't, don't take anything away from Carol Carol has done a superb job to to take this to the final round after only joining the series on the third week at Road America. So, uh, you know, to be able to take this AM Championship all the way to the end has been a superb job for Carol. But Sophia Ridpap, oh, Andy Archer's round. Andy Archer's round, was that was he pushed or uh, was that the McLaren? I think he may have been pushed by Boomy. Oh dear. And if he's pushed by Boomy, that could have that could be huge if he protests that and it's a mechanical meatball warning flag for Andy Archer so he's going to park his car that could be huge in championship terms well, let's look at that we're waiting on the back of Archer's car now here comes Boomy closer 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 bang oh dear oh dear that could Why? that could go to the steward's office why do you need to do that it makes no sense. Well, Jack Sedgwick, by the way, has taken the lead of the race. We, we, oh, well, he's, he's fighting to take the lead of the race from Jack Osborne um, at, at the front of the field. But Bume has now got a big question mark. And, and I, I don't know, James Bume will be sat there thinking, oh, no. Oh. You, you, you're going to be sheepish now if you're James Boomer. Eh? You're, you're going to be offering to buy dinner. You've got to buy dinner for Andy Archer now, aren't you? If you're James Boomer. Eh? Oh, you don't need to protest that. No, no, let's let's go have some have a beer. <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's interest. Well, yeah, Boomer is basically he's going to be just hoping and praying that Andy Archer doesn't put a protest in. That's that. That could be the one of the one of the deciding factors of the championship. There, depending what the the penalty is, uh, if there is one, if it's protest, it's a lot of if buts and maybes. And yeah, uh, 
It's uh, provisional in full capitals and bold <laughs> and italics. Underli- I think, and underlined as well. Uh-huh, with with a yellow highlighter through it. Yeah. Uh, by the way, if, if uh, and by the way, we're not we're not judge, jury, or executioner here in the commentary booth. We're just giving you the facts. If and if it did get protested, and if the stewards found him guilty. Because he ended up with a mechanical meatball warning flag, that would be five license points against him, so against his World Sim Racing license, and a 50-point penalty. That would be huge if, like we say, it's a big if, the incident gets protested, and if the stewards did then decide that James Bume was at fault. Ooh. You can't write this, can you, Peter? No, you, you can't. You can't, and why, why, why do you need to be getting involved with it? You would want to be having one of those Mario Kart blue shell force fields around you at this point, and wrap the car in bubble wrap. Don't, don't be mixing somebody who's not even in your class. Oh, uh, Josh, Josh, Josh Boots, by the way, in the YouTube chat, a teammate of Andy Archer, is a cheap day to take him to a Kotobi Carvery and he'll be golden. Uh, so there okay. we go. That's, that's one way to... He's not going to be protesting after a slap-up meal at Tobury Carvery. No way. <laughs> well, we're into the final so, lap. Actually, the Fat Atom Christmas party is going to be paid for by James Boomey at this point. <laughs> The final lap of the race. I mean, a, there is a race going on, by the way. Um, Jack, Jack Sedgwick leads by half a second over Jack Osborne and Tim Perry. So Osborne and Perry are stayed as they were. It's just that Sedgwick has come through there. 17 places gained for Jack Sedgwick. Uh, Ross McFarlane now fourth ahead of Dan Blackwell, who's got the pressure from Mark Fletcher around the outside for the Altitude Esports team. No move made for the team boss here. He pays for the bills, does uh, Mark Fletcher. So, uh, with Adam Watson on the team, I bet he's glad that it's a virtual car and not a real thing. Um, Arthur Fertelt behind him with Joe Newman, Adam Watson and Sophia Ridpath in 10th place. But look at the drivers behind Ridpath. Got Bume, Thompson and Davidson. If you're Ridpath, don't, don't block anyone. Just just allow them past if me if that's me yeah so if you're red path now just get this car to the to the end that's all it's about just do not get in any kind of silly incidents to anyone and she is getting cl- she is very close oh. to winning a well-deserved am championship here oh adam watson's car is looking twitchier than the twitchy thing and uh, well red path isn't gonna have him have an accident in front of her they're gonna go side by side towards the end of the lap and red path up to ninth place but Jack Sedgwick through the final turn for the final time this season. He is a race winner here as the Inex racing driver ahead of Jack Osborne and Tim Perry, who uh, Osborne wins Pro-Am this final race of the evening. Dan Blackwell is going to be your Am winner in this race, finishing in sixth place. Sophia Ridpath provisionally will be your Am champion for season 14 of the world gt championship and very provisionally james bume will be your champion in the pro championship so uh, james bume he's gonna have a huge asterisk against his uh, name at the moment waiting to see if that incident does get protested in the end well, 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 what a dramatic day. What a what a controversial day, Paul. I have to say, it's, mm. we've had uh, it, pretty clean sailing through through the whole uh, season, but that, that race meeting there, that really was last day of school syndrome, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. I, I will say, Jack Sedgwick, two wins tonight. Won the first race, won the last race here tonight. So uh, Sedgwick does get two wins in the end. Uh, for this one so it is jack sedgwick then provisional race results on screen first place for inex racing for jack sedgwick jack osborne for fat atom racing he gets a pro-am win at the end here in that mclaren 
to give it its send off here for the team. But Tim Perry in third place, second place in Pro Am. Ross McFarlane, a fighting charge for him. 15 places gained to finish second place in Pro, but fourth place overall ahead of. Matt Fletcher, who finishes off the Pro podium in fifth place dan blackwell great result for the 3m blue driver finishes sixth and that's an am win for dan over to arthur fertile john newman gets on the pro-am podium once again finishes eighth overall in that race ahead of sophia ridpath for second place in am ninth place overall provisionally your am champion james Bume, 10th place for the altitude esports driver potentially and provisionally your pro champion 11th place for josh thompson for team red line he was on a charge after starting from the pit line actually for josh adam watson ahead of alex davidson with paul webster dennis grabowski your pro-am champion michael gray daniel sedgley adam hedgecock finishes on the pro on the am podium in 18th with altitude esports blue driver ahead of his teammate lars van ryan and Ben Gregory rounds out the top 20. 21st for Matt Loveridge with Nathan Healy. And well, oh my goodness, Carol Pakalka. How heartbreaking for Carol to finish 23rd in the end, ahead of Paul Quist and the Archer. And Ethan Critchley, who caused that accident for Carol, does not finish. Five laps down in this one. Well, Peter, um, controversial. I think you said it absolutely right there. Controversial end to the season. And, well, I've got a funny feeling that people are going to have to check out worldsimracing.co.uk in the coming week to, to get the final confirmed standings here because it is a big asterisk right now of provisional champions. Yep, that would be my summary uh, as well. And... You have to, you really you have to spare a bit spare a thought for Carol Pakalka because what could he have done there? He it wasn't like he braked way too early, and even if he did, it still it still would you know it's up to the driver behind to avoid. But he hit the brake at the same time he always had. Ethan Critchley was never making that corner in a million years, and cost at least cost Carol Pakalka the chance at going for the championship he may well have come up short Sophia Redpath had the points advantage she ran a very good race as well this is absolutely nothing away from her and if she comes out as the AM champion she's fully fully deserved well yeah fully fully deserving of that championship but uh yeah you do have to spare a thought for Carol Pakalka though you really do well we've got a couple of drivers uh, waiting to have a word with us so why don't we have a word with uh, your provisional pro champion peter mckay take it away with james bma james you're the provisional world gt champion it's been an amazing season from you all year how are you feeling right now uh a, a bit uh I feel, I feel a bit speechless to be honest um i'm you know, I, I think I've had, I've driven really well all season. I think this last round's been a bit uh, difficult, um, but uh, I think you know, hopefully everything goes smoothly and uh, but everything goes smoothly, really. Yeah, but um, yeah, bit, bit, bit of a tough performance today, really. But I'm hope I haven't got my hopes up too much yet because I know there's quite a lot of things to go through, but. Um, yeah, I'll wait and see. <laughs> I mean, t tell us, it, this, going for a championship is a emotion and feeling that very few people get to experience. And for you, you've you know you've had a lot of success before, but to go for the overall championship is is something else. What were the what were your emotions like today and and coming into the races as well? Um, I, I think you know the qualifying pace was strong in practice, and the race pace was strong in practice. Um, I, I I don't know if I, uh, I think uh, I, don't, I don't know what it was. I I, I think there's a, but no, I, I just I just think today was one of those days I just didn't have any form of consistency. Um, but uh, I managed to get some results, but I, overall, like I, I I'm hoping I've managed to uh, equal that. Uh, they. <laughs> and 
and, and finally, you know, there was, you know, come tell us what happened there into La Source. We saw uh, Ethan Critchley go into the back of Carol Pakalka. You were sort of in and around that. What happened? Uh, well, I think Ethan Critchley uh, just sort of like, as I went around the outside of Ethan, uh, he sort of just like disappeared from my screen and for like a second and then he reappeared and as soon as he reappeared i saw two a mercedes and a mclaren straight in front of me and it was sort of blocking my path to the second part of the uh, corner so uh I, I just had to avoid it really like i just had to get right out of the uh just out of the way i felt like it, i felt like at the time it was the best sort of route to take back onto the track but because I, I did, but the problem was I didn't expect the slowdown to be as big as it was, um, and uh, I think that cost me a lot of places and time, unfortunately. Because I think I was like P8 or P, P8 or P9 at the time, uh, and yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I, I sort of wish I uh, perhaps maybe went on to the second half uh, of the bus stop chicane rather than just sort of cutting the whole thing. But it is what it is. Um, it's in the past. Oh, yeah. Well, I, t I tell you what, James, that you've put together an amazing season, some fantastic performances all the way through the season. Uh, I'm, I'm, you are our provisional champion right now, and if uh, if that is confirmed, it's very well deserved. A great season. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, just lastly, I just wanted to say uh, massive thank you to the team for all the support throughout the season. Uh, of like, like, you know, just sort of general well-being, uh, setups, uh, and training, and all that sort of stuff. And uh, last but not least, uh, to our sponsors as well: uh, 3M, Sim, uh, Sim Stickers, Mr. Hedge Photography, Finding Speed, Mr. Loins, and Grumpy Dad Designs as well. Just want to say a massive thank you to all those guys as well. So there we go. That is uh, James Bumay winner of uh, our provisional champion and we're now going to be joined by uh, olympus team manager charles boschel who uh, will be a very happy person right now because not only are you am team's champions but also your driver in sophia ribpath is uh, provisionally uh, the am see, champion I can't hear you though. You might just drag me back down so I can figure it ah out. so we've got some audio issues for charles um, this is live broadcasting, Peter. <laughs> what do we expect here? It always happens, doesn't it, to us? It does. Yeah, that is the joy of uh, the joy of live broadcasting, isn't it? As well. Yeah. We can. Uh, well, we've got uh, a few other drivers waiting in our uh, uh, in our uh, waiting room, and we can get a chat with some of them in a moment. But what a what a performance of Fear Redpath all season, just so, so quick. And last season just could not buy any luck. This season, uh, it's been not been luck that's put her in that position, but it, she just got a little bit of a better run of things and able to show her speed without getting caught in, in others' incidents. So it's been mighty, mighty impressive. But another driver's been mighty impressive, Paul, Josh Thompson. Yeah, Josh, welcome back. And uh, well, it seems to be we speak to you each week. Um, how was that evening for you tonight? Pretty chaotic, to be honest. Um, <laughs> to, I, like after last week, I thought it was going to be a bit like interesting with like the cars. I mentioned like the different strengths, and tonight proved it was actually pretty close. Like everyone had a good chance in all the race to win. So overall, pretty fun night, regardless of how race three went with me missing the grid. But we won't talk about that. <laughs> I did see that you came out in the pit lane, so, uh, so yeah, so... Um, <laughs> New challenge. But, yeah, it was a bit of a last-to-first um, challenge uh, on all of that, but, I mean, you came back partway through the second half of the season. I mean, you got four wins out of the last six races. I mean, uh, from a personal point of view, you must be happy with your performances to be able to jump back in like that. Yeah, especially with this series, anything can happen. So even just to win a few races... Is it like over a season? It's pretty impressive. Like, I think a few seasons ago, I only won, I won no races one season. It just shows you how hard it can be, especially like the reverse grids. Anything can happen. So to be able to get four on the bounce is on a comeback. I was over the moon with. Obviously, a bit of a pinch of salt because obviously you come back into it a bit later into the season. People aren't 
worried about you as much, I feel. Like, there's some races that people just didn't really want to fight me as much because obviously I've not got anything to lose. So, maybe in a different championship perspective over a long run, maybe be a bit different. But, yeah, like you said, I can't complain about how many like, races I managed to pick up at the end. Uh, I just want to touch quickly because it was a it was a testing weekend for you, shall we say, on Saturday in the oh. uh, in the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup Contender Series. Is it nice to just be able to just come into a series like this and just be like, right, get that out of the way, let's just get some racing done? Yeah, especially after Saturday, I really needed to do something to cheer me up. Like I did not want to drive, did not want to touch anything. I was very close to not even racing tonight. I just wanted to focus on the Porsche for the final round because obviously I've now dropped into that last position to qualify. So it's going to be a very tough round ahead next week while well, this weekend coming. So, but yeah, just to get, just to come here and have some fun, just try and get your head out of it and just chill out. It was pretty fun. Well, Josh, we'll let you go and enjoy your evening, but thanks for joining us here. Thank you guys. Thank you for having me again. No worries. So there we go. That's uh, Josh Thompson uh, that we've uh, got to speak to there. Uh, Peter. You've got uh, the team boss from Altitude Esports, Mark Fletcher. Good evening. Mark, Mark welcome to the Racebot TV commentary booth. Uh, goodness me, those uh, those silver Porsches, we've called them a blizzard of Altitude Porsches out there as the collective noun. How do you feel after what's been a great season all round for your team? Yeah, it, it's been brilliant, to be fair. Um, obviously, you guys have known Altitude for, for a long time. Uh, obviously, we formed in... 2019 but yeah it's sometimes a blessing sometimes it, it, it works against you um we had catalonia which um sticks in my brain where we had a team meeting afterwards because i said this isn't this isn't how it works we, we we're not built to race like this you know um, you know you're all better than this kind of stuff so it's great we've got so many cars in the championship but yeah sometimes it works against us Yes, that's true. It's, it's what is it they call it? Embarrassment of riches sometimes when you've got so many fast and determined drivers. I mean, let's talk about James because he's always been quick. We know that, and we know that he works hard at his, his racing. But the level that he's stepped up to this season here in World GT is just astounded. It's astounded me personally. It's astounded all of us at Racebot, I think. And what have you seen as a team manager the steps that he's made and why he's got to such a level and come out of here as a provisional champion yeah i think i think when i when i brought him into the team he was still fairly new to our racing um obviously i've always supported the world the world well what was the world gt championship um and it's yeah you know it's always where the fast boys are you you like some at farland your, your davidson your cedrics they're all here so i think when he won pro-am and you know tom dadswell won that a couple of years ago and he's just gone right okay i'm going after McFarlane, for instance, and it's, uh, yeah, he's worked so hard all year. Um, the whole team has, to be fair, but yeah, he's, he's class as James and he's, uh, yeah, flying up the rankings and is now a force to be reckoned with. He, he definitely is. And, you know, final question, sky's the limit. Uh, what are the next targets now that you've ticked this one off? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, me and Paul have known each other for a long time and there's no way that one day I thought that I'll be... Uh, sat in here thinking oh yeah we've we've just won the world gt championship you know it's it's fantastic and and to be fair we've won well we've got a trophy in every category so yeah mr watson was p2 in pro-am and you know our photographer skin maker mr hedge was uh yeah third in am so yeah we uh lock out the the podiums just in uh, three different championships I like it. I like that way of looking at it. It's uh, very well deserved, Mark. Well done uh, on a great season and looking forward to seeing you out on track once again in future. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Peter. Have a lovely evening. So there we go. That is Mark Fletcher. And uh, hopefully now joining us here is uh, Charles uh, Boschel from uh, the Olympus Esports team. Uh, first of all, have we got a copy? We do have a good copy. Thank you very much, Paul. Sorry about that. That's I'm, not a problem. I'm, I'm less prepared than my drivers this week. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will say, you know, you must be delighted. Uh, provisionally, an AM champion, also the AM Teams Championship. You must be a very happy team manager. I am an extremely happy team manager. Uh, we, you know, we're a young team, small team, and uh, the the work that these uh, these drivers put in week in and week out to get ready for this event, um, 
just absolutely fantastic. It's been a joy to uh, to be a part of it, to watch them progress and be successful on track. Um, and I'm just really, I'm, I can't be any more proud than I am. Uh, but I mean, you know, we've seen the progression, especially with Sophia. You know, she couldn't get any luck last season uh, in, um, you know, the most unlucky person on the grid i feel this season we've seen that real progression uh, what do you think it has been that is it just experience of, of running in this field i i think some of it's the experience i think you guys kind of mentioned it earlier in the season just sticking with the same car uh and instead of trying to find the next big thing uh, which a lot of drivers seem to do uh, nowadays oh the new the new ferrari's out let's go to that um so but no she said you know i like the beamer i'm comfortable in the beamer so she stuck with that and i think that's been one of the keys to her success and uh, uh, moving forward as a team you know it's always nice to actually speak to a team manager for a change rather than just the drivers but moving forward as a team you know where what's the next steps for you now is it a case of just um reflect on what's happened here and then uh look at what what is next up well i mean uh, i was in the uh it was in the chat with them earlier and they said yeah i can't wait till next season starts so i'm, I'm assuming that we'll have a, a a good group of cars uh involved in this next season but you know the the team itself's got other things we've got a porsche cup team in the 24 8 series uh you know had a good run could have been better you know we had a technical issue but uh it you know what we'll take the p7 and we'll get ready for the next event and you know we've got a couple of teams in ivra and so we're just uh, we're just going to keep progressing and uh moving forward and growing and uh start um start uh, shaking the tree a little bit wonderful well congratulations uh am teams champions and an am champion in the drivers as well congratulations thank you very much there we go that's uh, charles boschel and we do get to quickly speak to dennis grabowski here our pro-am champion dennis um it looked like it was uh, a bit chaotic out there today i would say it was whole season a bit chaotic <laughs> <laughs> um but you must be delighted to to get that championship win and to uh, to get that under the belt as a privateer with no teammates. So you did it the hard way. Oh yeah, I registered to this uh, championship with hopes that I will remember how to drive because yeah, previously I had uh, some time of uh, blank space of uh, no driving at all, and yeah, like I'm pretty happy with the result. <laughs> Well, um, just finally then, uh, what's what's what you're looking forward to? Are you, have you got things in the plan for for the future, or will we see you back in the series? Um, at least I plan to yeah to back the series and hopefully probably with some team and I don't know, <laughs> so I'm open to <laughs> any suggestions. <laughs> there we go send all uh, team applications to dennis grabowski's inbox is what i say congratulations dennis on the pro-am championship thank you very much uh well peter we've we've been waiting patiently thankfully a few drivers did come and speak to uh speak to us here but we do have some championship uh points updated we won't be able to bring them up on screen but james bume provisionally 28 points championship leader jack sedgwick only finished 44 points behind in, four, in third place so uh, got really close in the end in pro yeah he had a great final round didn't he i think just right driving free and um yeah did a did a super super job and let's see for james boomy that was a very telling interview wasn't it he there wasn't any whooping or hollering he knew yeah. that this this is far from sealed up and it's it's do you know what it's such a i'm it, it, we we don't know whether you know, whether there'll be any change to the final outcome or not, but it is a shame for it to, to be sealed like that because yeah. James has just been perfect all season. He's just been amazing. Um, so I feel in a way I feel sorry for him that it's just sort of stuttered to the line. Hopefully he's got over the line um, because it would be a deserved championship. But difficult last day of the season for him, that's for sure. Another difficult day in the last se last last day of the season i'll get my words out paul sophia ridpath and carol pakalka we thought it was swinging 
towards Carol Pakalka, and then in came a, 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 a McLaren shaped wrecking ball in uh, Ethan Critchley, unfortunately. Yeah, and but Sophia also had her share of mm. uh, of of stuff come her way too. I mean, in race two, getting turned around for no apparent reason. Um, yeah, they both had a very rocky rocky run of things, and it it, it looks like it's just it's just going to come out in Sophia's favour. Um, so yeah, you got to feel sorry for Pakalka. He did it on less races, um, but Sophia's just been solid all season. Stuck as as we heard there, stuck to the BMW, really used that to her advantage, put together consistent finishes, and she deserves the, the, the AM Championship. But either of them would have in that situation. Yeah, absolutely. Pure Sims Esports are your pro teams champions. 131 points clear of Altitude Esports. And in your AM Teams Championship, as we said, Olympus Esports Titan are the AM champions in the teams. 134 points they beat Fat Atom Racing. I mean, Peter, final round of the championship. Final thoughts on the on the season? Well, it's always fun joining you for uh, for, for the World GT Championship, Paul. It's, uh, it's been, an, on the whole, it's been a very, very good season. We've gone to some great tracks. We've had some great events and uh, three uh, three new champions also um, that's what we like to see absolutely tremendous stuff and uh, dramatic stuff from the series as always it just leaves me to say thank you everybody who has joined us uh, watching these streams thank you to the series admins to the series sponsors to the drivers as well to everyone behind the scenes at race spot tv as well uh, our producers hugo louise dame bed uh, for the last couple of round, rounds as well uh, and Peter Mackay, myself, Paul Smith, and everybody who's joined you in the commentary box for this season. We wish you well and uh, look forward to your more racing coming to you soon here on Racebot TV. Until then, it's goodbye. <laughs>